Hi and welcome to week 19 of economics. So this week we're going to look at some of the complexities of financial markets and investments. Our focus will be on the process of stock trading. We're going to learn what stocks are and how they're traded. The nuanced benefits and risks of buying stocks. The mechanisms through which corporations raise capital. Uh, quote unquote, that would be money via stocks and bonds, the intricate dynamics of market crashes, and the pivotal role played by the stock exchanges in the global um, economic landscape. So taking a look at the objectives here, we're going to start by delving into the mechanics of stock trading. So stocks, and this is fundamental to know, represent ownership in a company. And the process of buying and selling them occurs in financial markets or capital markets, as we call them. Investors place orders through brokers who act as intermediaries between buyers and sellers. These transactions take place on stock exchanges such as the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. And electronic trading platforms have streamlined the process, allowing investors to execute trades with unprecedented speed. The fluctuation in stock prices reflect the constant interplay of supply and demand in these markets. So we're then going to explore the multifaceted world of investing in stocks. Buying stocks can offer significant benefits. So investors, for one, gain ownership, as we said, in a company, entitling them to a share of its profits through dividends and potential capital gains as the stock price rises. However, with these opportunities, of course, comes risks. So stock prices can be volatile, influenced by market conditions, economic factors, and company performance. Understanding these uh, basic benefits and risks is crucial for investors in making informed decisions that align with their financial goals. So transitioning a little bit to corporate finance midweek, we're going to decipher how corporations raise capital through stocks and bonds. Now, when a company goes public through initial public offering, it sells shares to investors, generating funds for expansion, research, and other initiatives. On the other hand, on the other hand, excuse me, bonds represent debt where investors lend money to the company in exchange for periodic interest payments and eventual repayment of the principal. Both stocks and bonds are integral tools for corporations to raise the capital needed for growth and development. Then we'll navigate through the tumultuous terrain of market crashes. A market crash is basically when stock prices plummet rapidly leading to widespread panic and selling. These crashes can be triggered by various factors, such as economic downturns, financial crises, or unexpected events. The effects are usually profound. They impact investors, businesses, and the broader economy. Wealth can be wiped out, businesses may struggle, and the economic fallout can linger for an extended period. Understanding the causes and consequences of market crashes is essential for investors and policymakers alike. So, concluding the week, we'll analyze the role played by stock exchanges in the global financial uh, system. So, stock exchanges serve as centralized platforms where buyers and sellers come together to trade stocks. They provide transparency, liquidity, and efficient price discovery. Exchanges facilitate the continuous flow of capital, connecting investors with opportunities and corporations with funding. So we've already mentioned the likes of the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ earlier in the video and other exchanges. And these are the essential cogs in the machinery that drives global economic activity, shaping the financial landscape that we navigate daily. So, of course, as we this week goes along, we'll also be talking about some of the current events 
going around in the world. We'll be talking about markets. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all and working with you in class. Thank you.